trophy of the season against the league leaders Porta Down, who already have the League Cup tucked under their belts at Shamrock Park. A great atmosphere building for what should be a battle of giants. And joining now two giants of the local game, let's go to Tommy Cassidy of Glen Torn. But picking it up first, our match commentator, Stephen Watson. Linfield manager Trevor Anderson named an 18 man panel for the game and he makes one change from Saturday's lineup. Surprisingly, Darren Erskine is dropped. We had expected a Haylock versus Erskine tussle, and Desi Gorman is back in, and he partners Richie Johnson up front. Johnson has been in superb form recently. Nell, McCush, Ewing, and Campbell make up the midfield, and remember Linfield without Alan Byrne, Wes Lamont, Raymond Campbell, and Stuart McLean. The name to look for in the Port of Down team is Scott Leach, signed last night, a midfielder with Scottish side hearts. He's here on a month's loan. He can play striker too, and he will do tonight, and he'll partner Gary Haylock up front. Brian Strain and Philip Major are suspended. Their place is taken by Gareth Fulton at right back and by Raymond Byrne, who made such an impact at the start of the season. Greg Davison and Peter Kennedy are back after a one-match suspension. And a point to note, there are seven changes to the Port of Down team that won the League Cup final three months ago. There's the referee for tonight's encounter, Mr. Davy McGill. Linfield kick off the Ulster Cup final, the first meeting between these two sides in the final of the competition. Port of Iron have won the trophy once before, that was in the season 1991, when they beat Glenavon 3-2 on penalties. Linfield in search of their 16th victory in the competition. The last time they won it was back in 1992 when they beat Ards 2-0. Here's Greg Davison playing at left back tonight for Port Down. Strong tackle there by Crothers. Davison trying to force his way down the touchline. Free kick given the other way. Davison incensed by that. Well, there's been a debate between the two managers before this game about who should be the underdogs. A hard one to judge, I suppose. But I can tell you the Blues have the upper hand in cup finals against Portadown because the Ports have only been have only beaten Linfield once. That was in the Gold Cup final, believe it or not, in 1953. There's Ronan McFall, the Portadown manager, looking for his 12th trophy in charge of Portadown tonight. Here's a replay of that incident with Greg Davison. He was trying to force his way through. All accidental, really, on Jeff Spears there. Doesn't look as if it should be that serious for uh, Jeff Spears. Free kicks taken by Crothers. Dornan. Up went Davison, well won in the air. It was Ewing with that header. Going in again, just pumping it forward. Desi Gorman's made a good run off the ball. Here is Gorman. Neat touch inside as well. But it's Porter Downs' turn to try and break forward now. Ball forward and really nobody there. An easy ball for the Linfield keeper, Darren Crawford. And Jeff Spears has made his way back on. Linfield restored to the full 11. Age 27, Darren Crawford, been having a fine season with Linfield, deputising for the injured Wes Lamont. <laughs> Off the head of Johnson there. Plenty of men in the middle, Gorman's there, so's Campbell. <laughs> Richie Johnson, the comeback kid. Out with a pretty serious injury and he's made his comeback just this season and been having uh, some fine performances too. Tim Dalton, the Ported Iron keeper, signed from Bangor this season. Well run by Spears. It's for Gary Hale off the chase, no Bailey back pedals. Gordon slides and the Portadown fans enjoy that one. Throw taken by Gareth Fulton. Chipped into the middle where Kennedy awaits. Wins a header too. And a good save there from Crawford as uh, 
Robert Casey came charging through. Just about four minutes gone in the first half. Kennedy did superbly well, and that was an excellent save from Crawford. Linfield to keep the pressure on through Evans. Shot comes in low from Scott Leach, the new man, and it's smothered well by Darren Crawford. There's Scott Leach. Quite an impressive player. He's in dispute with Hart at the minute and came to port it down with thanks to Ian Ferguson. And here's Gorman. Quite a lively start to this game and that's a good save this time from Tim Dalton. Ian McCush with the shot there. McCush toe poking one. And Dalton down quickly to smother. one's been described as the, the battle of the heavyweights in the cup final we've been waiting for it for a while do you think it'll be worth waiting for uh, I would imagine so Stephen uh, two good sides then feel a bit of a hiccup at the weekend but uh, they'll be very hard to beat tonight I'm putting down a great win of the weekend so I think it could be a very very good cup final there's Gary Peebles the former Linfield midfielder scored the winning penalty when these two sides met early in the season of course Free kick to Linfield. Philip Nell is over the ball. Nell takes the free kick. Easily cleared by Portadown though. Gary Haylock, the sole man up front. Covers under pressure from Haylock. Linfield fans will enjoy that, no doubt. Now well, here's Robert Campbell. Greg Davison being in the thick of the action. Came on as a substitute when Portadown won the League Cup earlier in the season, playing at left back tonight. Some contention, Tommy, of course, the match being uh, played at Windsor Park and not at the Oval. Uh, Linfield actually said they probably would have preferred it there because their form has been so bad here at Windsor Park. That's right. Well, I know, I know the circumstances, obviously, and uh, to be perfectly honest with you, Steve, I don't think it's fair to, to have a cuff final. It's, I think it's going to be a neutral final. But that was just something behind it. But I'd like to see from now on finals to be played in neutral, on neutral grounds. Alan Dornan on the end of a fairly rough challenge there, and the yellow card awarded to Paul Evans. Let's have a look at uh, what happened. Well, it was a fairly high challenge. Just caught Dorn as he went down. Anderson and McKeown looking a little edgy at the moment. Good bit of skill by Richie Johnson there. Now here's Philip Nell. Plenty of men in there. Gorman. Davison ups to build from the back for Portadown. Bailey's header. Well kept in by Johnson, who really has had a stirring start to this game. Davison certainly outraged by that challenge, and he's going to be booked as well. Well, it's a game of them today, isn't it? You know, uh, any tackling behinds uh, penalised, and uh, Greg Davison did hurry in there. But two years ago, that would never have been a free kick, even. It's a free kick for Linfield, though, which will be taken by Peter Crothers, the 24-year-old right back. Now, now here's Gorman. Richie Johnson awaits in the middle. Jeff Spears is still up there as well. Spears black flicked header. No real trouble for Dalton. Yet to see a lot from Portadown's new signing, Scott Leach. Just the one shot from him. Desi Gorman offside there.
Raymond Byrne, signed from Newry this season, will take the free kick down towards Kennedy, who wins another header. Casey's header this time. Now Kennedy gets a good cross to Haylock, who lets it run. The shot came in from Leach and well blocked by Linfield. Danger's not away yet, though, and that's a great save from Gary Peebles by Darren Crawford. Yeah, it was, it was a, I think it was a, uh, a great party down move. Linfield showed uh, a lot of strength actually in blocking two, uh, two great shots, and then the last shot came through and went through to Crawford. They made a very, very good save indeed. It's the first time put it down, been on the attack for the last 10 minutes. Darren Crawford, the Linfield keeper, has been in splendid form. He did let a silly goal in on Saturday, but overall he's been producing some magnificent saves, and that was another one. That's a free kick, surely. Robert Casey brought down, and Alan Ewing booked third booking of the game. was in plenty of space there. Offside has been given against Richie Johnson. In fact, I think it was Desi Gorman. He didn't say some very nice things to the linesman, actually. But Linfield are back in possession. That's a good ball to Crothers. Flicks it on for Gorman, just a little too long. Now here's Kennedy. Couldn't trap it there. Hey, Raymond! Ronnie McFall off the bench trying to. Well, speaking to Alfie Stewart, one of the seasoned campaigners, to try and settle the team down. Greg Davis on a good run and he gets past Crothers. Robert Campbell for Linfield, Nels to his left. Gorman and Johnson are up forward. Plenty of room for Campbell here. Good header and it's cleared off the line by Davison. The header from Ian McCush there. A good firm header by McCush. He maybe should have put it away. Let's have another look. Yeah, it was a great run actually. And a great ball into him. The boy did very, very well and put it back. And I think he had McCush and everything right. He had it back where it come from. And uh, the lads are off the line. But it's a great move for Linfield. And well, they have a corner now, which Robert Campbell will take. The big men have made their way up. Jeff Spears is in there. Alan Ewing's in there as well. Desi Gorman just being shepherded by Alfie Stewart. Another corner kick for Linfield. Just over 31 minutes gone in the first half. Robert Campbell will take the corner. There's Desi Gorman with Alfie Stewart watching over him. Good header in, and it's off the top of the crossbar. Jeff Spears, the central defender up there with a good firm header. under pressure from Haylock, needed Bailey to help him out that time. But Spears, I have to say, has had a, a tremendous first half, keeping Gary Haylock off the ball. And here's an excellent chance for Linfield, but covering across was Alfie Stewart, who in turn has had an excellent first half for Portadown. Nothing to separate the two number fives, really. Get past Burn. Free kick through the ports. Into time added on now. Free kick. Bailey's header that time. Up went Leach. Got a tangle there. Spears back to Crawford under pressure from Haylock. 
Well, you don't mess about when Gary Haylock is storming in like that, do you, Tommy? Well, I think that's Gary Haylock's main quality. He went the whole way. There's a lot of centre forwards in the Irish League wouldn't have went there. He went in and almost put Portie down ahead. Yes, Gary Haylock, who hit a hat trick on Saturday, would love to score against his old club. He really did close down Crawford very quickly there, and the rebound could have gone anywhere. That's half time up. Linfield nil, Portadown nil. Been a good few chances, I suppose. Darren Crawford, apart from that little misdemeanor at the end, has had a, a good half, made a few fine saves. But we haven't seen too much of the new signing for Portadown, Scott Leach. Perhaps he'll snap into some form in the second half. Anyway, join us after the break, but at the minute, it's Linfield nil, Portadown nil. Second half underway, neither side have made a substitution. No score, remember, and if it stays like this after 90 minutes, we go to extra time, 15 minutes each way. But it's a long way to go yet. Now here's Leach, the new man from Hearts, to Kennedy. Ported down on the offensive early, Haylock awaits in the middle. Haylock's header as well. Referee just pulling play back for an injury to Jeff Spears. Damage done by Peebles, I would have thought, Tommy. This was a great cross, actually, from, um, from Peter Kennedy, and actually, Dornan did very, very well indeed. I think he just caught uh, Jeff Spears. Leach hands the ball back to... Darren Crawford. Viewing to Bailey. Away by Stewart. Dornan, Linfield captain, 32 years of age, as Trevor Anderson and Lindsay McKeown look on. Flipped inside by Dornan. Nell was in battling hard there. Pulled it on clear. And now this is a good chance for them to go on the counter through Gary Peebles. Haylock's to his right. Threads one through the middle for Haylock. But Jeff Spears is there again. It's had a good game so far, I think Jeff Spears has needed to New lease of life, I think since Hume McLean got injured a long time back, Jeff Spears came in and did a great job. Yes, if I remember rightly too, he may have been on the transfer list uh, not so long ago. Play continues through Greg Davison. Tries a shot and palmed over the bar superbly by Crawford. As Philip now uh, has received some attention on uh, this near side. Well, Greg Davison made a great run forward. He jumped over one tackle and a great left foot shot. And Darren Crawford scored off a magnificent save. There's Gary Haylock at the near post. Guess who's beside him? Jeff Spears. Corner will be taken by Peter Kennedy, who's got a wicked left foot, believe me. Commentator's nightmare. Not that time from Kennedy. <laughs> goes Gorman, the header was from Stewart though, for Kennedy to chase, Kennedy recovers and is on his feet, good play by Kennedy, now here's Leach to Kennedy again, Haylock awaits in the middle, Noel Bailey just got in the way of the cross, it comes in at the second attempt and it's headed away by Nell this time, now here's Greg Davison, thought about the shot for the minute and is pushed into the corner, Kennedy regains possession though, now Davison, just can't get the cross in, pulled it out, a chance for Linfield to try and break forward, that ball's meant for Richie Johnson. He's got a lovely first touch, Johnson, and that's a super piece of skill as well, just needed a wee bit more support. Wins a free kick in the process, though. And a lot of good work by Johnson, I didn't think it was a free kick, but he did very well to go by two party down players.
Linfield preparing to bring on Stephen Beatty, normally a left-sided player. Clever Anderson keen to make the substitution. As Peter Crothers is uh, on the far touchline receiving attention. So Crothers is coming off. And Stephen Beatty is coming on. There's Crothers receiving the attention. This could perhaps mean a little reshuffling for Linfield Tommy. Well, I, I don't. I, I would imagine that Dorn would have went to right back and uh, seen Beatty going to left back, but that mightn't happen because Dorn has done very well against Sean Paul Evans. Well, we'll wait and see. Beatty has made his way forward for the Linfield free kick. Plenty of movement in there. Spears, Ewing, and Nell. Floated in by Campbell. Ewing tried to get on the end of it. Beatty smashes one over the bar. Well, that would have been uh, quite a first touch, Tommy. Well, Tyrone Anderson would have been a god tonight. Uh, what a substitution coming on the first touch, he maybe puts it on the net. Well, the danger was headed away, and Stephen Beatty, the 25-year-old, almost made quite a name for himself. Peter Crothers being stretched off. The 24-year-old who's uh, making a name for himself at Windsor Park. Header by McCush, who's moved into the right-back position. doesn't do so successfully, up goes now. a drop for someone to try and get their foot onto the end of it. It's still there for Linfield, and a slice shot that time by Richie Johnson. Now here's Campbell. Deflected over the bar for a Blues corner. A little free of activity there, and actually Linfield probably should have scored, and but a, a, probably the best chance of the match, I think it was Robert Campbell, but he didn't hit it right. Taken by the substitute Stephen Beatty. There's Alan Ewing at the near post, along with Richie Johnson. Swung in. Dalton almost missed times it there. Well, that was a marvelous opportunity for Linfield, but put it on now. Uh, going the counter attack with Gary Haylock. Blue shirt swarming around him. Here's Leach. Now Fulton gets inside Dornan and inside now. Stewart, borderline sensibly composing themselves. Fulton, down the line to Evans. Doesn't get the better of No Bailey. And they've put it down, the chance to make their substitution. Paul Evans is coming off. And he'll be replaced by Paul Carlisle. BD. Header was run by Peebles, though. Davison wins a throw in. Not really what he intended, I don't think. Going off Desi Gorman. Peebles now to Fulton. Plenty of space for the youngster to push forward. A good ball through to Peter Kennedy as well. Kennedy gets away. Kennedy inside to Gary Haylock, and he scored for Portadown. The ex-Blue Man scores at his old ground, Windsor Park, for the Ports. His first goal against Linfield. And I nearly forgot what side of the ground to celebrate that. Yeah, but what a good goal it was. Peter Kelly showed all his skill, all his craft. Mm -hmm. Hellock did, did the, the easy bit, but Kelly did all the hard bit. That's a 
thought he did magnificently good in the position he did. Got his head up, made it easy for Haylock. Coming up to 28 minutes gone in the second half. Quarter down, one, Linfield, nil. Well, we've got a game in our hands now, all right. BD. He's done well, BD. Almost manages to squeeze a good cross in two. That's Barry Haylock, 25 years of age. Hat-trick, of course, he scored on Saturday, and Ronnie McFall, the manager, said, if Haylock plays well, then quarter line usually win. Now Linfield will make a substitution. Philip Nell is coming off, and Pat Fenlon is coming on. Fenlon, a tenacious midfielder and a good goal scorer too. Eight goals this season and 24 goals overall for Linfield. Yes, I think Pat Fenlon will give Linfield a little bit more guile and craft. He'll create a little bit, I think, more than they have been doing this game. Trevor Anderson trying to rally his troops. Back to Davison. There's Pat Fenlon, has played at all levels for the Republic of Ireland, except international level, believe it or not. Came from Bohemians for £20,000 to Windsor Park. Davison's throw for Porter Down, his side 1 0 up. Carlisle's made a great run away to the right, and he's picked him out as well. Carlisle drills one across. Really was a tremendous run off the ball by Carlisle there, Tommy. It was a great run off the ball and a great ball from Robert Casey. But you can see the confidence now oozing out of the party dance after getting that goal. Sports hey. manager, Ronnie McFall. Still can't afford a smile even though he's 1 0 up. Yeah, it's hard work around the bench. You're winning up about 10 minutes to go. It's, uh, it's the longest 10 minutes of your life. Davy McGill forcing Robert Campbell to his feet. And Linfield will make a substitution. Darren Erskine, the striker, will be coming on. So Robert Campbell coming to get some attention. Let's hope that's not a recurrence of his old injury, which kept him out of the game for so long. That's number 14 for Linfield, Darren Erskine. Comes on to replace him. Just the six goals in 29 games for Darren Erskine so far at Linfield. Let's see if he can provide the spark for the Blues needed here tonight. Linfield have used up their full complement of substitutes now. Fenland, Beattie and Erskine all on. First touch for Erskine. Good chance for Linfield, wide by Desi Gorman. Yeah, that was another half chance, Stephen. Maybe he should have done better. He'd be disappointed not hitting the target. Yeah, it's just the half chances that Linfield will hope to take. Desi Gorman only had one chance at that one. Taylor tried to flick it on neatly with his head. Just nobody there on the end of the cross. Dornan chests it away for a ported down corner as Carlisle pressurised. Good corner flicked on. Looked like a little bit of a handball. Well, referee said play on. Play on. There weren't, weren't too many claims from ported down either. But certainly someone seemed to handle it uh, on the far side there, Tommy. Yes, yeah, so there's a great ball in from, um, from Peter Kennedy. Lovely flick off from Gary Halo. And it's very, very difficult to see, but it was a very, very close thing indeed. Now Kennedy whips one in low, and Crawford 
get his hands to it. Hacked away by Fulton to Dornan. Linfield in search of that a loose goal. Fenland gets away from Carlisle. Not a particularly good cross, but McCush will get on to the end of it. Oh, what a wonderful goal by Ian McCush. Four minutes remaining, and a super strike from McCush levels this game. That really was an absolutely excellent goal by McCush. Well, it's hard to believe the ball was a very bad cross from Finland, actually went right across the box. And I thought McCush would have been taking two touches and he hit it in one. And I just absolutely threw by Dalton and goals. Oh, pick it out. Dalton, totally confused, totally beaten. The speed of the shot, he didn't have time to see it. Well, you remember in the semi-final of this competition, Linfield were 2 0 down against Crusaders, equalised to make it 2 all in about the fourth minute of injury time, and then went on to win 3 2. Could they repeat it tonight? Kennedy's in possession now, it's quarter down here, trying to create something, but that is a wonderful tackle by McCush. Little shimmy shuffle, too, after it. That's a Brazilian shuffle. But the score stays like this, we've got 15 minutes of extra time each way and that's exactly what we're going to have Gary Haylock put Porter down in front time was ticking away for Linfield but the man who he has a little joke with Ian McCush equalised it's Linfield one Porter down one prepare yourself for extra time so 15 minutes of extra time each way we still can't separate the sides. It's a penalty shootout, of course. Quarter down have already beaten Linfield on a penalty shootout this season. That was in the League Cup quarter final, and Gary Peebles hit the winner. Fenland's header away by Stewart. and just lets it drift away for a, a Linfield throw. Gorman in plenty of space. Not a bad looking cross either. Alan Ewing just deflecting his header wide. Yes, Linfield they feel a confidence now getting that late goal. Good cross from Gorman. Ewing did up well, just couldn't direct it on target. Free kick to Porter Down, taken quickly by Scott Leach. Carlisle wins a free kick, brought down by Darren Erskine. Leach and Kennedy over the ball. Kennedy likes to hit them with the left foot, of course. It's on the correct side for him to do that. Haylock, Byrne, Peebles and Casey all waiting. Kennedy might just have a go himself. Straight into the wall from Kennedy. Here's Haylock. Spears blocked that one with claims of handball, of quarter down. Nothing given by Davy McGill. Long throw by Fulton. Kennedy might latch on to the end of it. Gary Peebles does though. It's 2 1 for Porter Down. The masked Avenger does it again for the Ports. Remember. He hit the penalty, a winning penalty, in the League Cup quarter-final. And he's put Porter down in front with about three minutes gone of extra time. Well, a typical Gary Peebles goes on the flick on, and Gary Peebles, he doesn't score many spectacular goals. He gets all his, a lot of goals from the inside the six-yard box, and he proved it there. Just getting that little final touch. Just needed a little poke past Crawford. 
So it's two ex-Blue men who have inflicted the damage against their old club. Peebles and Haylock. We are not worthy, say the Portadown fans. Misread by Alan Ewing, giving Peter Kennedy a chance to surge forward. Ewing redeems himself. And Lukush, the goal scorer, is back in possession for Linfield. They have enough time to be patient. They don't need to hurry things, the Blues. Desi Gorman loses out to Davison and Leach together. Davison in his ninth season with Porter Down takes the throw. Kennedy. A slip by Stewart might just let in Richie Johnson here. Erskine's forward as well. Now here's Fenland. Porter Down, defence in disarray. Fenland! And it's in! Fenland is equalised! Trevor Anderson off the bench in elation. The substitute. Goal. Tim Dalton dejected. Well, what about that? Porter Down really were all over the place there, and Linfield capitalised. Super strike. Dalton couldn't grab it away enough from it. Well, Peter Kennedy gave the ball away midfield. First, he did very well. I thought maybe Fennell should have played it wide, but he hit it with his left foot, and he's renowned for that. Erskine gets away from Byrne, tries to barge past Casey. A little bit of indecision as Dalton came out and Davison. Certainly Tim Dalton a little bit edgy after letting in that last goal. A wee bit of confusion between him and Davison. So central defender Raymond Byrne is coming off. And Portadown are bringing on an attacking player, Neil Candley, so obviously they're going to throw everything forward in these last few minutes. Or perhaps Candlish may just be one of the penalty takers. As we head towards a penalty shootout with the game poised at Linfield 2, Portadown 2. Under a minute for the winner to try and be constructed from somewhere. One minute left, Ronnie McFall tells his troops. He's spot on, I would say, with a wee bit of injury time added on. Neil Candlish takes the free kick for Lyle. Back to Candlish. Bill just blows it up slightly early. Linfield two, quarter round two. This match, like the League Cup quarter final earlier in the season, will be decided on penalties. The ex-blue man, Gary Haylock, will take the first penalty for Porter Down up against Darren Crawford. 1-0 to the ports. Haylock missed the penalty against Linfield, believe it or not, in the League Cup quarter-final, but he doesn't do so tonight. Tim Dalton up against Pat Fenlon. And it's one inch just about. Yes, Pat Fenlon came on and did a very good job actually in the extra time period. He's got a tremendous step, but as he shows there, Dalton went the right way, but he had no chance of getting it. Peter Kennedy has been selected to take the next quarter down penalty. A long run up for the left footed midfielder. A confident stroke and quarter down are 2 1 ahead. Mm. 
Yes, they'll give him Peter Kennedy another left for the top corner of the net. Sometimes you're taking penalties, it goes look so small. He didn't, he made them look very big. The second Linfield penalty taker is another substitute, Stephen Beattie. And it's two each. No problems for Beattie. People say penalty kicks are lottery, Stephen, which they are really, but they're, they're sure there's some excitement about them. Robert Casey for Porter Down. Sneaks it in past Crawford. Yes, yeah, got a touch to it, but the, the strength of it, the shot, uh, took it into the net. Last night in training, Casey Missed a bucket load of penalties, believe it or not. He'll be thankful that one went in. The third Linfield substitute, incredibly, Darren Erskine. Yeah! Makes it three apiece. The man who came to Windsor Park to replace Gary Haylock stores fifth in the fans. <laughs> Gary Peebles, who I'm uh, told scored the winning penalty in the League Cup quarter-final shootout. Scores again tonight with the usual celebration. I wonder, can he see through that, Tommy? Yes, well, I think he's done that a few times in his career, I suppose. It's his trademark, isn't it? But he took the penalty very well. And actually, every penalty up to now has been struck very well. The Youth International and the player captain under 21 level for Northern Ireland, Noel Bailey, will take Linfield's fourth penalty. This to square it. At four apiece. And Dalton has saved it. Tim Dalton makes amends for the couple he let in during the game. Well, as you see, he struck it quite well, but it is a lottery. Tim Dalton chose it down the right way, got a touch to it, kept, keeps it out. Darren Crawford needs some inspiration. Neil Candlish needs to score this penalty to win the Ulster Cup for Portadown. He's only been on the pitch a couple of minutes. Candlish. Crawford almost saves it. Ronnie McFall is delighted as Portadown win the second trophy of the season. The Ulster Cup is going back to the trophy cabinet at Shamrock Park. Portadown beat Linfield on penalties. Neil Candlish struck the winner. And they're now on to continue an unbeaten run of cup successes this season. It's a running McFall. It was quite a finish. Yeah, it was a tremendous game. It did for, for spectators. As I said, I thought over 80 minutes we deserved to win it. We scored two goals from good football, and we scored two tremendous goals from 30 yards, 30 yards out. The fans of the penalties. What do the managers and the players think of it? Well, it's just a sad way to lose, to lose a cup finally. But as I said, that's the rules laid down, and obviously there's a point to lose it from Linfield's point of view in penalty kicks. But we we're obviously delighted to bring the cup back to pour down. A great advertisement for the local game. There was so much spirit and commitment. Some very classy goals out there, on it. Yeah, I thought our first goal was a tremendous goal. It was a tremendous ball from Fulton and inside the fullback. Kennedy skipped around the tackle and let it back to Halleck, who buried it. Linfield's two strikes are really two tremendous strikes from, from outside the box. But as I said, uh, us going into the game tonight with a lot of key players missing, I mean, Major and Strain, Ferguson, Russell and, Ke Russell and Cunningham all missing, I, I thought we showed tremendous character and resilience and I thought we deserved to win it. Neil Candlish, I think it's fair to say they don't come any more dramatic than that there. No, uh, I was only on the park a few minutes. Uh, I don't think I was down to take any of the penalties, but a few other boys had cramped, so I stepped up, and fortunately for me, it went in. 
The fans love it, as I said to Ronnie McFall earlier on, but what do the players think of it? Look, at the end of the day, I think the game's got to be finished, and it's just unfortunate there has to be a loser. Uh, fortunately for us, it wasn't us. It, and as a player too, you'd feel a certain amount of sympathy for Noel Bailey? Certainly. Uh, at the end of the day, there's a bit of luck involved. Uh, Tim Dalton brought off an excellent save from him, and then I stepped up and struck it, stuck it in the back of the net. And another cup medal for you, to Neil, that's what you came to port it down for. You're beginning to mount up with them. Yeah, that's my second, second winner's medal. Uh, hopefully be a few more before the end of the season. Um, I didn't think it was a particularly good game. Um, it didn't, it didn't liven up till, till maybe the last 20 minutes of normal time and, ha and extra time. Um, I don't think it was, like I say, a very good, exciting game. But uh, plenty of goals and exciting finish. That's what the crowd want. Yeah, magnificent for the fans. I asked earlier on to Neil Candlish and to Ronnie McFall, how do the players and the management think of these finishes? Um, I suppose it's like somebody always has to lose on penalty shootouts, um, and somebody like. Noel Bailey, who's, who's played so well, um, for him to, to miss the final penalty is tragic. But um, I don't think there's any better way. Um, I think it's if there were, then we would have found one by now. Um, so it's just a way of ending the game. I think everybody will say that it was, a, it was a great game and both sides were very equal and it's just a lottery at the end. So, Kerry, you got a bit of stick. You're still getting a bit of stick. But you got your medal and you got your goal. You must be happy with that. Yeah, I mean, I never expected anything else coming here, to be honest. Um, but like I said before, it just rolls off my back. Like It doesn't worry me at all. Um, I've got the goal, I've got, a win I've got the, um, the winner's medal and I'm sure there's a lot of fans going home tonight and saying, well, he's got 29 goals this year, our leading scorer has only got nine. There's something wrong there. That's what we did from Windsor Park. It has to be said, it started off slowly, but boy, they did finish with a bang. Heartbreak for Noel Bailey in the Blues, but in the end, a light for Neil Candlish and Portadown. Hope you enjoyed the action from all of us here in Windsor Park. It's good night. <laughs>